Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of The Carousel Show. I'm Roller Co I'm Coaster Cat, aka Roller Coaster Rider, and I'm going to be flying solo uh, tonight because <clears throat> uh, I have two friends that I can do these podcasts with. One of them we just ran out of time, and the other one um, is really exhausted and... Eh, whatever, you know. Uh... <clears throat> I've got five stories this week, uh, including two of them that I wanted to do last week, but the show ran long, so I cut them out. <coughs> First up with Universal Orlando. They are removing the T2 Terminator 2 building. Uh, I'm going to lose... A lot of you are going to hate me, but... I have never seen Terminator 1 or Terminator 2 or even Terminator 3. I've just seen Terminator Salvation and that was it. I've not seen Genesis. Um, I, don't get me wrong, I want to. It's nothing against those movies. I just... I, just time. And I have been to Universal and when I went, that was not something I did. Uh, not something I really cared to do because... <clears throat> I don't know, it just seemed like a regular stunt show or st with screens and 3D and stuff. I don't know. But they said they're removing it and putting in something cool for 2019. My first thought was that they were going to uh, gut that theater and use that as the new location for Bill and Ted during Halloween. They can put in a uh, some kind of uh, illumination show, maybe like a sing type show. Uh, you can have, I don't know, something like uh, Turtle Talk with Crush or uh, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, except it's themed to Sing, which I think would be a good hit with the kids. Uh, you could do Sing, where it's kind of like a karaoke show. Or you can do uh, some kind of circus stunt show, or maybe even something with How to Train Your Dragon, because there is a lot of gliding and effects in those movies. That's just my idea. <clears throat> I've heard from a number of people that that theater is way too small for a Bill and Ted audience, so I don't know. Maybe they should do it multiple times or something? I don't know. Um, I was also thinking maybe that might turn into a... Maybe they may they might do some of that for Nintendo, but it's rather far away. So I'm going to still put my bet that this is going to be a... <clears throat> When they say live action, I have no idea what that could mean. Um, some people are saying Pitch Perfect. I like those movies, but I don't know how strong that... And I think that that brand is good. But I don't know how strong that brand could be to last more than like three or four years. Um, people have also thought about maybe a Austin Powers show. Uh, maybe a Back to the Future show in the past and bring it on and stuff which I, i'm not sure my thought is hopefully they will use that theater for bill and ted that's just my guess and maybe they can do uh multiple shows a night because of the small capacity let's get let's go to the other big dog in orlando disney's hollywood studios recently uh, they have sent out a bunch of names and for a rename for Hollywood Studios, and they all sound atrocious. <clears throat> out of all of these, Disney's Hollywood Studios still sounds the best, so maybe they're trying to make people like Hollywood Studios more? I have no idea. The names, and I'm going to take away the Disney part because it's obvious Disney. Kaleidoscope Park, Storyverse Park, Hyperia Park, Beyond Park... Cinemagic Park, Legends Park, XL Park, and Cinemagine Park. None of these work with the current IPs or future IPs. How does Toy Story work with, Cine with Legends Park? How does Star Wars work with Kaleidoscope Park? How does Tower of Terror work for XL Park? Uh, you've got Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad, or Railway or whatever, and it's called Disney Hyperia Park? Uh, I've given my idea for a name, Disney Studio City, which might as well. Or just call it Disney Movie Kingdom. 
Why not call it that? You've already got Animal Kingdom. You've already got Magic Kingdom. Go with Movie Kingdom. People are still going to probably call it Hollywood Studios or MGM Studios. Why not call it Disney's Buena Vista Studios or Disney's Touched, Touchstone Studios or one of your brands? But still, out of all of these names, Hollywood Studios, I would just stick with that. The park is going through enough of a revamp. It doesn't need a rename as well. You're already renaming. You're already, you're already revamping to, uh, Great Movie Ride. You've already gutted about three quarters of the park. And you, there's almost no consistency anywhere. So, And you've got Rock and Roller Coaster, which is themed to music, in a movie park. Again, none of these names sound even like a good idea. And I really hope Disney didn't spend too much money brainstorming on these ideas. Sorry, it's just a thought. <clears throat> Next up, Kennywood has announced that they are removing their 42-year-old log jammer log flume built by Aerodynamics and opened in 1975. I wrote this back in 2003, and when I went back, this wasn't something I did. I did Garfield's Nightmare. Please don't judge. I did Black Widow. I did Phantom's Revenge again. I did uh, Sky Skyrocket. I did Ghostwood Estates. I did the uh, Turtle. I did the Arrow, uh, Arrow uh, Auto Ride. <clears throat> But the log jammer, um, I guess a lot of people are really sad about it. And here's the big problem. The park did not give enough announcement time for its removal. This should have been officially announced in June or July so everyone could have left. So everyone could have gone and ridden it if they wanted to. Out of all the water rides in the park, this one... This one, or uh, Raging Rapids, the Rapids ride, makes the most sense to remove. Um, I don't want them to get rid of Pittsburgh Plunge. I don't want them to get rid of, uh, well, I want them to rethink Garfield's Nightmare, but I don't want them to get rid of it. <clears throat> so, I can understand with it being an aero ride and that company is not around how parts are becoming expensive. Water rides in general seem very expensive. And... <clears throat> chances are it'll make room for a new coaster. Uh, some people are sad because there apparently was a drop that you then went up and then you splashed. If you really want that, Splash Mountain is similar, and uh, Everland in Japan has, or ugh, Everland in South Korea, excuse me, has a log flume that also does the exact same thing. So. It's sad to see a classic ride go, but it's kind of understandable. And log flume fans, Idlewild has a log flume that you can go on. Paul Bunyan's Login Toboggan. <clears throat> Let's see, what else? Universal Orlando has announced the dates for Harry Potter Weekend, and admission is apparently $600 a person, which includes... Uh, two park three day tickets with park hopper, so you can go back and forth and you can ride the Hogwarts. Uh, includes butterbeer, some desserts, and it also includes two meals, and it also includes lodging at a Universal Studios partner hotel. <clears throat> I can honestly say I went during this time; it was not that crowded. So I would say if you're going to go to Universal Studios and you want to avoid the crowds, go on like a Go on like a Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and during around this time, and for the most part, you'll have the park to yourself. And also go during and and if budgets are tight, it is a good deal. I think at six hundred dollars. Let me see. Six hundred dollars. Oh, per person per night. Ooh, never mind then. Um. Yeah, that's all. Never mind then. Scratch that. 
Um, the final one, I was going to do a full review of Fright Fest. However, um, since I don't, since I didn't go through all the houses and I, or any of the houses, and I didn't go through any of the scare zones or the themed areas, I'm just going to give you my review of one of the shows that I went into, Ringmaster's Cabaret. This show is to an extent EFX 360 plus. It kind of has a very vague plot where it has a bunch of where it has the Ringmaster, which is pretty much just like a Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland Extreme, along with a girl who looks like Alice. So, um, <clears throat> during it, they play a bunch, they sing a bunch of songs. When I went, though, the audio was very terrible. Not the singers, but the, the, lyric, the music was louder than the, than the, uh, singer, so... You had almost no idea what you, what I I had almost no idea what I was hearing. Um, there's a bunch of extreme stunts, but if you eh, if you don't sit in the very front, I think kids will be okay. There's uh this isn't a spoiler. There's sword swallowing. Uh, and they do it very extreme wise. One of them looked like Alice Cooper, if you ask me. Um, what else? Then there's, then there's a bunch of magic tricks. Um, and some of the songs that they sing, uh, make sense like Feed My Frankenstein, Bring Me to Life, and Zombie Jamboree, where it takes place in the Six Flags Cemetery. But other songs, I had, I never thought they would be able to put in Shake, 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 Senora, and a bunch of songs like that. Oh, Ballroom Blitz. They also they also play that, and the show doesn't seem to have like a big, huge finale. It just kind of ends. I would recommend you. See, I would recommend people see the show. It's pretty fun, and because the park only has like one real indoor theater. Uh, I think Love at First Fright kind of got like slashed in terms of what they could do because it's only playing about half the show or half the times. <clears throat> and for my tip of the day, <clears throat> if you're going to close a ride, give um, at least a month in advance notice. You're not going to lose attendance by announcing a ride closure two or three months before it happens. Anyway, that's my tip of the day.